it's the Daily Kebab. Greetings Matanistas and welcome to yet another Daily Kebab. The final round of matches are well underway and I'm going to flip the order of play a little bit. I know it's more dramatic to have the reaction to the day's play and then the previews but I've been getting the videos up at 5 or 6 in the morning Turkish time so I'm going to have to reverse the order unfortunately. So what do we have coming up tomorrow? First of all the games that are played earlier in the day. That's Group D which is France against two Tunisia and Denmark against Australia. Now I think that Tunisia might get something from a French second team. Whether they can beat that second team or not, I'm not sure. But I'm going to give that one a one-all draw. I think that France will rest a lot of their best players because I believe they're guaranteed first place, correct me if I'm wrong, unless maybe the Australians massacre Denmark and they actually lose to Tunisia. But I don't think that's going to happen. And in the other game, I think that Denmark will win this one. They need to win this one, and I think they'll get the job done with a 2-0 win. Now, if Australia do get their noses in front, like they did against the French, it might be a different matter. But if Denmark score first, I mean, those boys are as tight as Scottish accountants. It's going to be very hard for the Australians to get that deficit back. So then we have Group D, the group with Argentina, Saudi Arabia, Mexico and Poland. Both games kick off at the same time. First game I'm going to look at is Argentina against Poland. And I know Poland got a win last time, but that was because the Saudis piled forward, made mistakes and couldn't put away their bazillions of chances. Now either Poland are going to be able to clam up successfully at the back and try and hold out, which I doubt, or if they go at all open, I think Messi and co will put them to the sword. So I'm going to go for 2-0 to Argentina here. Now, the other game between Saudi Arabia and Mexico is much harder to call. And it's very hard to call who's actually going to finish second in this group. In fact, I'd say hard to call who's going to qualify and where. I think Argentina will win and top the group, but behind them it could be anybody. And I have a sneaking suspicion that the Saudis are going to nick this one and come second in their group, which would be one hell of an achievement for them. That Mexico team, OK at the back, quite compact in midfield, get the ball out to the wings pretty quickly, but then the standard of the crossing and finishing, woeful, absolutely woeful. So I'm having them firing blanks again and Saudi Arabia scoring. I'm going to go for 1-0 to the Saudis, but whatever happens, you're bound to get an exciting game with the Saudis. Even if they concede the first goal, they'll keep on piling forward, playing that high line, and it's a match I think I'd rather watch than the simultaneously played Argentina against Poland. Game. Anyway, Matanistas, I'm enjoying some coffee in the Kadikoi area, which is still on the European side, but over the water. And I'm going to finish up here, head off back to the area where I'm staying, which is called Sultan Ahmet, watch the first game, and then bring you the second game of tonight involving England and Wales over tonight's kebab. So, before I go out to watch the England against Wales game, just enough time to give you my thoughts on the first round of games today. I didn't obviously watch Netherlands against Qatar because it was fairly obvious who was going to win that. The only surprising thing was that they only won by two. The game I did see, though, was a bit more exciting, really absorbing, between Senegal and Ecuador. Looked at the beginning of the game as if Ecuador were just going to steamroll them and it was going to be easy-peasy. Steamroll them being a surprising thing to say about a team that had the most incredible defensive reputation. Just shows you that how they play in their own geographical zone doesn't tell you how well they're able to attack or defend against teams from other parts of the world. Now the Mutton Easters. This is actually the first time I've been to Istanbul as a tourist. I've been twice before for conferences but I've ended up staying, as I wasn't actually sure where to stay, in the district of Sultan Ahmet, which is where the Blue Mosque, the Hagia Sophia and various other attractions are based. And I found it's actually a bit of a tourist trap, to be honest. A lot of my filming has been done in Fatih, the neighbouring district, which is where a lot of the Islamic tourists go and consequently have better kebabs. OK, one good thing is that there are places that serve alcohol around here. There's a 24-7 super supermarket just opposite my hotel. Tons of boutique three-star hotels which are quite reasonably priced although one thing you have to be aware of is that they don't have lifts a lot of them and I cannot travel light. 
So here we can see down the street, I mean, it is like wall-to-wall -wall bars, coffee shops, sweet shops, pubs, restaurants. But the problem is, how do you know which one to go into? There are often touts in front of these restaurants trying to entice you in, which I don't like at all. But it's something that's a fact of life here and something that you have to deal with. So I've had to go on to reading reviews to try and help me. Now, the way to read these reviews, and it's not always reliable, but it's better than nothing, is that if you see a restaurant that's got a high rating with a ton of people reviewing it who've left one or two reviews, then those reviews are not reliable. The most reliable reviews are those from people who have left a ton of reviews. And my next problem is going to be to find a place to eat with a TV and commentary. Getting all three at the same time might be a bit tricky. There are a couple of pubs here, but that might mean having a burger instead of what I'm really looking for, which is Turkish food. Well, I found somewhere the football's playing in the background. And I've managed to get myself a cheeky half litre of FS Lager. And a tasty drop it is too. Now, I would have thought it'd be a bit cheaper, although it might just be the area I'm in, but this set me back £4.25, and as I speak, Saka's just missed a sitter. Obviously, I'll be bringing you content from other parts of Istanbul this week, but I have to say, for the moment, it seems a little expensive around here. The main, which I'm quite looking forward to, 280 lires, that's about... 13 quid. I mean, those are kind of getting on for English prices. And that's for a country where the currency is taxed. Let's see later on in the tour, when I go to other parts of the city and to other parts of Turkey, whether that is comparable or not. Anyway, come on England. And fair play to the Babylonia restaurant where I'm eating, because not only did they put the England-Wales game on a separate TV to the Iran against USA, but they turned the music off and put the commentary on, even though it's in Turkish, of course. Not many places would do that, to be honest. Oh, and my apologies to Mr. Saka as I sat down, well, as I was being sat down because I was waiting to make sure they put the commentary on before I committed to eating here. It was Rashford who missed the sit not sad. The food started coming and I've started with something that you often get even for free before a kebab in some places including in Manchester but I thought I'd give it a try here because I've had it so often in Manchester I'd like to know how it tastes here. And it is Turkish lentil soup and they've made sure you don't go short of bread here. A massive, I don't know what it is, it's a bit like a naan I think but I'm sure it's called something else. Mm, it's tasty, but I have to say it tastes exactly the same, well not exactly the same, very similar to what you get in a Turkish restaurant in Manchester. I guess that is not where Turkish cuisine in its own natural environment differentiates from that you can get when you're abroad. I'm not sure what that is. It might be like some flaming casserole kebab thing, but it's not mine. Now, my main has arrived, and it's not actually a kebab. I saw something that caught my eye on the menu. And of course, Turkish cuisine, there's a lot more to it than just kebabs. Anyway, I can't pronounce the Turkish version, but it's called the Sultan's Delight or the Sultan's Favourite. And what it is, is meat. And I think it's beef here. I think it's normally supposed to be lamb, but I'll check it out. It said chicken on the menu, but it doesn't look like chicken to me. On a bed of smoked aubergine with a chilli pepper and a tomato. And of course, rice and Glasgow salad. That is obligatory on the side. So this is piping hot. I hope it doesn't burn the roof of my mouth. That tastes like beef to me. Anyway, the meat itself is nothing spectacular, but the sauce and the eggplant, or the aubergine rather. Did I say eggplant? No, really? Gross, what am I doing? Anyway, the aubergine and the sauce is quite delicious. Anyway, the England Wales match has been a little more bland than the cuisine so far. I'll be back after I've finished the meal and the match is finished to give you my reaction. Well, half time at the moment, and my meal was pretty good, overpriced, but pretty good. 
and the football not so good. I thought England's moves when they were in promising positions just kept breaking down with a bad final ball all the time. Wales basically been able to deal with nearly everything other than that rush for chance and they had a half chance at the other end when Joe Allen of all people was on the edge of the box with a shooting chance but didn't really get close to the goal. At the moment even if Wales nick that one it won't matter because the other match is 1-0 to the USA so at the moment the only difference it would make if Wales got a goal would be that England would finish second in the group rather than first. Not clear what the best thing is to be honest because yes it means we get the Netherlands rather than Senegal but Senegal aren't too bad but then there'd be a potential quarter final against France. Mbappe running at Maguire who don't fancy that. Not sure who we'd get if we got the Netherlands and then beat them anyway. Well, there we are folks, the final whistle has gone and England have beaten Wales 3-0, thoroughly deserved by England. Wales didn't do very much, but as I said at the end of their last game, too many old players playing there, a huge rebound needed. But they've done well to get where they have got in the World Cup, qualify and then at least give themselves a shot in the last game. Two quick goals for England, first of all Rashford from a free kick, and I'm pretty sure the Welsh keeper took a step the wrong way which stopped him from having any chance of getting to the ball. Then a really quick turnover, forced again by Rashford. Kane slotted in, crossed the ball over to Foden, running in at the right place at the right time. Southgate, why haven't you been picking him before? And then again for, well I wouldn't say the whole defence, but the wing on which Rashford was on parted like the Red Sea to let him score England's third. So England threw to play Senegal. Probably some selection dilemmas for Southgate. And in the other game, well, an exciting finish. Obviously I didn't watch it, but the restaurant I was sitting at after England's game had finished switched over and it ran with desperate pressing for an equaliser. What I've read has suggested that they didn't do enough early on. Anyway, it did mean that I got a prediction spot on there. I picked the US to win 1-0. I picked England to win 2-0, so that wasn't far off. Balls up Ecuador against Senegal, thought it would be 2-1 the other way, and thought the Netherlands would get 4 against Qatar, but they got 2. It was basically a game of think of a number there. It was good of the restaurant to have two screens and commentary from each game so that people could watch either. Food was tasty, a bit pricey, not massively pricey. Anyway, Muttonistas, I'm going to stick to this new template of predictions first and then reviews and reaction afterwards along with your daily kebab. And for today, Muttonistas, that was your daily kebab.